Mr. Chairman, M C H M E N stroke called upon K O P O N at this moment T T H S M E N stroke Congress of the United States K G E U three years T H E R S to take up T U T A P whether or not reverse E N out of the Treasury A U T R E S H World War U with a big circle around it. In my opinion, in the end stroke, A, P, N, many of those, in the end stroke, E, T, H, S, people of the United States, P, E, P, E, U. About the manner, A, B, M, E, N, stroke, reverse, E, it seems to me, T, S, T, E, M, stroke, E, take into consideration, T, A, K, S, we take, U, E, T, A, the facts and circumstances, T, H, Disjoined F S S with reference to the matter E T H R F M A T against the A G T H take into account T A K T one way or the other, U N A U T H. I should like to say A S H D L A S A to declare T E D stroke E and an R tucked under. Service is a left S above the line which we must determine C-H-U-E-M-S-E-M-E-N stroke in a satisfactory manner in S-A-T-M-E-N stroke reverse E we take up U-E-T-A-P saying that it is not S-A-T-H-A-T-S-N-T stroke Supreme Court, S above the line, K, T. Supreme Court of the United States, say right S, K, T, E, U. Few facts, F, E, U, disjoined F, S. With regard to that, E, T, H, R, E, T, H, A. In spite of the fact that the N S P long I disjoined F T H A T H whether is E occupied O K disjoined T. I do not know whether or not A D E N stroke O E N. On the question, O N K S H, let us consider L E right S K S. Look at the L U T H. You will agree with me. U L large oval M E. Bear in mind. 
B, reverse A, M, long I. To take the matter up, T, U, T, A, M, A, T, P. Ever since, E, V, S, E, N. Large number of cases, L, A, J, N, U, M, K, A, S, S. As a matter of fact, A, S, M, F. Because of the fact that K, S, F, T, H, A. State of Virginia, S, T, V, A. Mr. Chairman and gentlemen of the committee, there are several matters which we are called upon to consider at this moment and which have been considered in the Congress of the United States for the last three years. The first question which we are going to take up today has to do with whether or not we should pay any money out of the Treasury to those who were members of the Army which went to Europe during the World War. It is my opinion, and it is the opinion of many of those who considered this bill during the several months that it was before the committee, that we should be very careful about the manner in which we distribute the funds, which are paid into the Treasury by the people of the United States in the form of taxes, it seems to me that we should take into consideration all the facts and circumstances with reference to the matter before we take any definite action. I believe that it is very important to take into account anything which may affect the question one way or the other. I know that I shall not be permitted all the time that I desire in which to discuss these matters, but before I leave this subject, I should like to say in passing that I have great respect for those who were in the United States Army during our war against the countries of Central Europe. It was not my privilege, nor the privilege of a great many of the members of this body, to serve their country in that manner. But I think we all understand what that service meant. The next matter, which we must determine today in a satisfactory manner, is whether or not the Congress of the United States shall go on record as saying that it is not the duty of the Supreme Court to declare that laws passed by this Congress are contrary to the views expressed by the founders of our government when they wrote the Constitution. It is my belief with regard to that matter that we have made a great deal of progress. In the last century, in spite of the fact that the Supreme Court of the United States has disagreed with the Congress in several important matters, I do not know whether or not you will agree with me, but I doubt very much if any good could be accomplished 
by changing our position now after we have seen our present plans work out so well. However, I am ready to take the matter up now, and if you so desire, we can vote on the question today without any further delay. If there is no objection on either side of the chamber, I should like to express my views on this subject, and I shall do so in as short a time as I possibly can. But bear in mind that this is a subject of great importance to the people of the United States and one which requires a great deal of consideration. There are many things to be considered which it is our duty to consider before we go on record in regard to this matter. Let us consider first the real question that is to be found at the heart of the whole subject. And that is whether we are taking a step which is a distinct change from what was intended when in 1887 our Constitution was framed. Let us look at the words which were written in that great document and see for ourselves whether or not the Supreme Court of the United States has gone beyond what it was meant to do. Of course, we must remember that it is not said in so many words that it was the intent to give the court that power which it has exercised ever since it came into existence. However, before we take up that matter, allow me to present a few facts which, so far as I know, have not been presented to this Congress with relation to the subject which we are now discussing. It was many years after the government of the United States came into existence before a large number of cases came up before the Supreme Court. As a matter of fact, if you will look at the reports, you will find that the judges found it difficult to keep occupied because of the fact that there were so few cases presented to them. We have had some great men who have sat on the bench of the Supreme Court of the United States. But I think I am safe in saying that the greatest of them all was that noble son of the state of Virginia, John Marshall. 